better sourdough bread. That is what we're all after, and that is exactly what we're going to try and achieve today. So better sourdough bread. Well, better is somewhat subjective, but for me, my perfect loaf has got to have a nice, dark, crispy crust, really pronounced here from that good oven spring, and a light, airy, even crumb inside. I'm not too fussed about getting those giant irregular air pockets. It is strangely satisfying when you do get them, but to be honest, as long as it's light and airy, none of that dense gumminess, then I am very happy. We're also going to be looking at a better method. If you followed my foolproof sourdough recipe before, you'll know we used a KitchenAid and we followed an awful lot of stages to get to that loaf at the end. That video is really like an introduction to sourdough baking, covering every topic that you might come across in a recipe. But in this one, we're going to whittle it down, do something much simpler and hopefully get an even better result at the end. If you're someone that struggles with sticky dough, be that sticking to your hands when you're mixing, sticking to the worktop when you're shaping, or sticking in the banneton when you're trying to tip the bloody thing out at the end to bake it, then this could be the video for you too, because there should be a few tips in there to help you resolve that issue. So, for this recipe, you're gonna need 400 grams of bread flour. I'm gonna divide that into 350 grams of strong white bread flour, and then 50 grams of wholemeal flour, I'm using a stone ground spelt flour for that. If you want to go 100% white, absolutely you can, but maybe just lower the hydration by about 10 grams just to compensate. When it comes to hydration, we're going to be using 280 grams of water, giving us a total hydration of about 73%, because we're going to be using 80 grams of sourdough starter, fed mine this morning, it's doubled in size, looking nice, light and airy, smelling good. And then you're just going to need nine grams of salt. So when it comes to sticky dough or avoiding sticky dough, for me, the biggest key is a long auto lease. And that's what we're going to kick this recipe off with. So in our bowl, we're going to put the 400 grams of flour. So like I say, the 350 white, top that up to 400, like so, and then to that are 280 grams of water, in it goes, and then just using a hard spatula or a wooden spoon, give this a mix, and to be honest this is the only mixing involved in this recipe, once we've done the mixing then we're going to switch to um, the folding, and it's the long auto lease that's going to pretty much do all the gluten development for us. So there's not going to be a lot of kneading and work involved. We're just going to let time do its thing. So get that mixed in. You don't have to be vigorous with it, but you want to be kind of thorough. You don't want to leave any uh, sort of clumps of sort of dry flour in there. Otherwise, they probably will remain in there till the end of the loaf. So this is the point where you really want to make sure, just keep going around, that you've got it all nicely combined. Just move it around the bowl, just check that if it sticks to the spatula, that we can't avoid. Sticking to our hands we can, but use another one just to scrape it off. And then, if you just sort of smear it around a bit, you can check that you haven't got any dry clumps. That's looking absolutely fine. So now cover that with a tea towel. A nice Busby Bakes one works really well. And then pop a plate on top of that. That just creates a nice seal, stops it drying out, because we're now gonna leave this at room temperature for two hours. Okay, so that's been two hours. Now if we take a look, it won't look like much has happened, but I will show you how much the gluten has developed just through leaving it to do that long auto lease. So if you don't want dough to stick to your hands, a really good tip is to keep your hands wet. So I've got a bowl of water here, we'll just keep our fingers wet, and then I'll be able to show you just how stretchy and extensible this dough is. So if I grab a bit, 
keep my fingers wet so it doesn't stick. Then we can see, I mean, look at that. Look how stretchy that is. And I've, we haven't worked that, we haven't kneaded it, we haven't had it in a mixer. That is just, if I can put a little chunk out, that is just from sitting there, you can see how stretchy and extensible that is. And with the wet fingers, it's not sticking to me. So like I say, if you're someone that struggles with sticky dough, a long auto lease and wet hands is going to make life much easier. So to that now, we want to add our sourdough starter and our salt. I used to do this in two stages. Starter first, leave it for half an hour or an hour and then add the salt. But to be honest, now I do it all in one go. So 20% of flour weight, so 400 grams of flour, we're gonna use 80 grams of starter. So we can see it's nice and bubbly, good activity. I've been feeding this quite regularly over the last few days. A, because I've been sort of practicing this quite a bit, but B, just to keep the starter nice and active. Particularly now the weather's getting colder, things will slow down a little. Actually, I have had a few comments saying that I never talk about temperatures, and that's because I don't get too hung up on the temperatures. I'm more looking at how much the dough has grown, how much it's risen, but my house is probably around 20 degrees. So if yours is like that, you should be able to follow this, absolutely no problem. All the ingredients are room temperature, water's from the tap, so nothing warmed up, nothing tepid, all as is. So we've got the, move that out of the way, we've got the starter on top. I'm just gonna wet my hand again, bit of water on top of the starter, and now you can smear it over the top of the dough like that. And again, it's not sticking to me. And now over that, we'll sprinkle in the salt. Now you wanna sprinkle it kind of evenly over the dough because we're not gonna be doing a huge amount of mixing. So if you just dump a big wadge of salt in the middle, you might find you end up with a pocket of it and that could make it to the end. And when you cut your loaf, you might end up with one very salty patch. So spread it out. Now with wet fingers, just dimple the salt and the starter into that auto leased flour and water. Like that, looks a little bit like a focaccia. And then again with wet fingers, just reach down, stretch and fold. So a bit like the stretch and fold method we did in the foolproof sourdough recipe. But to be honest, here we're not looking for creating structure yet. This is more about mixing. So just keep your finger wet, stretch and fold down the sides, pulling over into the middle. Once you've gone round once, you'll find the dough releases itself from the bowl. And again, it's not too sticky. Now, if you wet the palm of your hand, we're not gonna be kneading, but we're gonna sort of be doing that, um, uh, what would you call it, that technique. We're gonna fold it over itself and then use the palm of your hand just to push it down. And go around a few times and this is just going to incorporate the starter and the salt and it will start to add a bit of structure to the dough but really this is about mixing at this stage so keep the palm of your hand wet keep going around like so and what you'll find is you'll get to a point where the dough does start to feel a little bit sticky it might just start sticking to the palm of your hand and that is your signal to stop. We don't want to be getting all covered in dough and messy. So we're going to go around a few times. You don't want to squeeze all the way down to the bottom and feel the dough tearing. You're just folding it onto itself and using the heel of your palm to stick it into position. Turn, stick, turn, stick, turn, stick. So like I say, go around a few times, maybe 15, 20 times, should have rolled my sleeve up. And as long as you can't feel any sort of rough grains of salt left on the outside of the dough, you'll be absolutely fine. We're going to repeat this again, so it's going to get another opportunity to get mixed in. So I'll flip that over, and there we go, nice and smooth, everything's incorporated. And now we're gonna leave that again, cover it with your T 
tea towel, like so, and your plate. And now this is the start of bulk proofing time. So like I say, at 20 degrees Celsius, which is my room temperature, that should take about six hours. Now we'll come back in half an hour to repeat this process, the kind of uh, mixing and folding process. And then we're gonna do two sets of coil folds after that, but I will show you that when we get to it. Okay then, so that's been about half an hour since we did our first bit of mixing. Now we're gonna repeat that process of going around with the heel of our palm just to finish incorporating the starter and the salt and then we'll be switching to the coil fold. So just wet the heel of your palm again, lift the dough up, fold it on itself and then squeeze it down. Again you'll just want to go around 10, 20 times maximum uh, and like I say as soon as you feel the dough starting to stick to your hand that is your sign to stop. So go around pulling the dough from the sides onto the top. So pull it out, fold it over, squeeze it down. Pull it out, fold it over, squeeze it down. So we're not getting too much of a stretch here, but we are getting the folding and the mixing. Okay, so again, pull that into a nice ball. That's absolutely fine. Again, not too sticky. Now you could put it back in here and carry it in there, but when we're doing coil folds, you might find it easier if you've transferred it to a heavier dish like this. And the other benefit of putting it in a dish like this is that it's very easy to gauge how much your dough has grown. So if you look at it now, it's taking up about a third of the bowl and it's sitting at about the same height as the bowl. By the end of bolt proof, we want that to have pretty much doubled in size. So you'll probably find it will spread a bit. So you'll probably find it will fill the whole bowl, but be sitting about an inch to an inch and a half high. So like I say, for now though, we want to leave that for half an hour. So again, cover it with your tea towel. It won't stick to the dough. Put the plate on top just to make a nicer seal. Uh, and then I will show you what to do for the first set of coil folds. Okay, we're ready to do our first set of coil folds. So a slightly different technique uh, compared to the stretcher folds, slightly gentler on the dough and should lend itself to getting that more open crumb at the end. So we can see the dough has relaxed and spread out a bit and it has started to puff up. We're maybe filling half the bowl now. So again, to stop it sticking to you, you want to wet your hands like so and then reach in either side, get your fingers under the dough, touching in the middle, lift the dough up till the front releases and that flap then goes under the dough. Turn your bowl around, lift up again from the middle and let the front fold under the dough, like so, then turn it 90 degrees and repeat the process. Pick it up, tuck the front under, and then because it's getting quite sort of taut and stiff now, you'll kind of have to lift it up. If you give it a bit of a shake, you can get that front down, tuck it under itself. And now I've created a nice taut cylinder. Now it will start to spread again um, over the next half an hour, but that's why we're gonna do another set of coil folds there. So in the meantime, just cover it with your tea towel and your plate, leave it for half an hour and we'll do it again. Okay, then we're ready for our final set of coil folds. So if we have a look at the dough now, we can see it has spread a bit, but we've still got some of the shape from our previous set of coil folds, uh, which is a good sign. It shows we've got some good strength in the dough. We can see the fermentations happening. We've got some bubbles appearing on the surface. And also you can see the dough's not sticky. It's a little tacky, which is why we're still gonna wet our hands to, sticky, to stop it sticking to us. But by this point, you shouldn't have a very sticky dough. Gluten development, structure from the fermentation, and strength from the folding 
should have cleared the sticky stage by now. So if you're getting to the point where you're shaping it still very sticky, I would say you haven't worked it enough and you haven't had enough fermentation, so just leave it a little longer. So I'm going to wet my hands, reach in, stretch it, fold that under, turn, stretch that front side, fold it under. Now you might struggle to get another full um, fold in, so what you can do, because if I lift it now it's just going to release and we're not really going to get that flat folding under, but with wet hands and just gently you can give it a little stretch like that and then fold that side in and that side under again into kind of a letter E and that can go back in the bowl and that will be the final set now you can see it's holding its shape nicely so we'll cover that with a tea towel and the plate or at this point what I often do is switch to a sheet of cling film because we're not going to be touching this again now until the end of the bolt proof and you really don't want it to dry out. So leave that untouched for around four to five hours. From the point at which we added the starter, we're looking for about a six hour bolt proof, but more importantly, you're looking for the dough to nearly double in size. You want it to be light and puffy, and when it is, that is your sign to shake. Okay then, we have reached the end of the bulk proof. Let's take a look at the dough and see what we're looking for. Now to be honest, if I had a little bit more time, I would have left this for maybe another hour, but time is against me. I need to get the shape before the children get home from school. But what you're looking out for is some good growth. Looking to nearly double in size, ideally. You're also looking for a nice puffiness. The dough should have a bit of shape to it. It shouldn't have just spread flat into the bowl. If it has, my suggestion would be wet the hands and give it another set of um, coil folds and then leave it to grow again. But we can see here we've got some nice growth, we've got some bubbles on the surface and it's also not too sticky. It's kind of tacky but we're going to take care of that with the rice flour. If it's like I said, if it's spread and it's still really very sticky, then you shape it and get in your banneton, you're going to find the dough relaxes in the banneton, and that is when it sort of seeps into these ridges and gets stuck in there. The key to it not sticking in the banneton is A, a little bit of rice flour, but B, that dough's got to be puffy so it's not going to relax too much into those ridges. So, we are going to give this a little dusting of flour on top. That's going to stop it sticking to the edges of the bowl as we tip it out. And then a little dusting on to the worktop. Again, like I say, using rice flour is brilliant. It's gluten free, so it doesn't develop any further stickiness as it takes in the moisture. So just release the top side of it from the bowl and then flip it over and just let it fall out. You don't want to be messing around with this too much. All the work you do to it now is going to be pushing out air and we're trying to keep it in there. So that's it. Just be patient. Here it comes. There we go. So now a very quick simple shape just to get it into a nice tube with a bit of um, tautness to it so it'll puff up nicely and spring in the oven. So we'll take the bottom half, fold it upwards, then take the two outside bits, pull them out a little bit because you're always trying to create tension and now ideally you want this little bit here to stick to the worktop, that's fine and we're going to use that again to create tension as we pull the dough. So just almost rolling it in on itself and that bit where it's stuck you just go over the top of it and now use a knife or if you've got a bench scraper you can just release it and then you just roll it over that excess flour give it another little dusting a little dusting in here with the liner you don't need quite so much flour so that's why I quite like it 
you don't get all those lines and the pattern of the loaf but to be honest I am quite happy using less flour lift that in and now we can see well you probably can't see but it's almost reaching the top and for me that is a good sign if once I've shaped it, it's sitting quite low in the banneton I'd know that I've cut bulk fermentation probably a little bit too early and I would now leave this at room temperature so the dough can continue to grow for maybe an hour or two. Ideally, I'd like to see it just doming above the banneton and that is when I know I've sort of hit my sweet spot. But this is where a lot of people get caught out and I think they're just cutting bulk too early and it may be the fault of the tartine book because I think in there it says uh, allow your dough to grow about 30 to 40 percent but if you do that and then shape it and get it in a cold fridge I can guarantee you in the morning you will be baking a very small dense heavy loaf you need that bulk fermentation to get the air get the gases in there and then the fridge is just for developing the flavor once the dough's cold in there the yeast's going to go dormant and it's not going to grow anymore so if you put your dough in in the evening and come back in the morning you won't really have seen much growth all that growth needs to kind of happen at room temperature so like i say if you have cut it a little bit early then get it into a plastic bag and leave it at room temperature just so it can continue to kind of proof and then get it in the fridge I'm going to put this in the fridge and I would leave it maybe 8 hours up to 12 hours anything beyond that I find I start losing a bit of spring and a bit of volume so I think the sort of ideal time scale for this would be feed your starter at around 10 o'clock in the morning um, and then it'll be ready in about four hours time so feed the starter at 10 start your auto lease at midday then at two o'clock your starter will be ready to go and your auto lease will be finished then your whole bolt proof is about six hours that'll take you round to about eight o'clock in the evening which will be just time for you to shape it before bed or whatever time you go to bed and then it'll be ready to bake in the morning so I'm going to get that in the fridge and I will show you what to do after it's cold proof. Okay, so baking time. So my oven is preheated to 250 degrees Celsius. My stock pot has been in there preheating also, so that is piping hot. Take the lid off. Do be careful. I've got a metal tray there that I'm going to put that on. If you put it down on a wooden surface, you might get a nice burn mark. So just watch out for that. The dough has come straight from the fridge. No need to let it come up to room temperature. We're going to cook it from cold. Normally, I would cover that with paper and tip it directly into the pan. But I want to show you the scoring. So I'm going to tip it out here and then we'll try and manhandle it into there later. So, we'll tip the dough out. So when it comes to scoring, a proper bread lane is really going to help you get that nice ear. Firstly, because a razor blade is very sharp. But secondly, it's going to allow you to get that angle and create that flap um, that you need to get the ear. If you just cut straight down the middle, the dough will just pop open like that. You want to come in slightly on the side and at an angle and that's going to encourage that nice ear as it blooms in the oven. So no soaring at it, don't go slowly, just one nice confident slice. Hold the paper so it doesn't move like that. Nice clean cut and now without burning myself, oh, in it goes. The lid on. And now into the oven, cook it for 23 minutes with the lid on at 250 degrees Celsius. Then take the lid off, turn the oven down to about 200 and cook it for another 23 minutes and your loaf will be perfect. Okay then, the final loaf, the big reveal. There it is looking pretty good actually good volume nice pronounced ear and a crispy crust just what i'm after 
I've let it cool for a couple of hours, so still just warm, but we'll be able to cut into it and see what we have got on the inside. So, moment of truth. Nice, pretty good. We've got some nice openness. It's a nice, even, light crumb. That is going to make some very nice breakfast. And if that's the sort of bread you want to be getting, then give this method a go. It's interesting actually, this is kind of, since I've been following this method, this is consistently the sort of bread I have been churning out. But if you do follow bakers on Instagram, you'll sort of get to know their style. So whether that's a Jim Charl or a Kristen at Foolproof Breaking or Maurizio or Baltic Bakehouse, you'll just recognise their style of bread. And this now for me has sort of become a Busby Bakes, a signature Busby Bakes loaf. I can't emulate what they're doing. It's great to be inspired by those people, but don't beat yourself up if you can't get those results. Be happy with the results you're getting because that is your signature loaf uh, and just stick with it. So, I hope this has inspired you. Do give this a go. It is much easier to get through. Yes, it takes a bit of time, but to be honest, the amount of work you have to do is quite minimal. If you're doing it on the weekend, a Saturday or a Sunday, you can get on with other things. Yes, you've got to come back and do the folds every half an hour to start with, but then it's just about leaving it to bolt proof, leaving it overnight in the fridge. So it doesn't take a huge amount of effort. It just takes a little bit of organization. So give it a go. If you do, always post your results on Instagram with the hashtag Busby Bakes. I love to see how you're getting on. I can either congratulate you on a fantastic loaf or if you're struggling a bit, I might be able to give you a pointer, send you in the right direction just for improving your loaf a little bit. But that's it, if you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, leave your comments and questions below. And as always, until next time, happy sourdough baking.